standing. Oh, he might have been beautiful to look at, but there wouldn't have been any glory take, take part of it. No glory in the presence because he was just covered with these jewels. It had to be because it was the glory of God, Brother Billy, or the presence of God. And this led to Lucifer's downfall. He began to stage a rebellion, if you will, in heaven. And Isaiah 14, 12 through 15 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, and I will be like the Most High. Rebellion in his heart. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Lucifer's five I wills in this passage of Scripture. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, or the stairs of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Pride began to take place in his heart. Rebellion began to take place in his heart. And he led one-third of the angels in a rebellion in heaven, and God cast him out. I said, God cast him out. I never want to forget that this is all about him. I said, I never want to forget that this is all about Him. I'm here because of the mercy and the grace of God. You're here because of the mercy and the grace of God. Brother Larry, I'm nothing without the Lord. I know that. I'm nothing without the Lord. Everything I am and everything that we will ever be is because of who He is. Because of who He is. Begin to think about that. Lucifer wanted to sit where God is. And he wanted his throne to be in heaven. The name most high in the Bible is the word Elohim. And it means the possessor of the heaven and the earth. And that's what Lucifer wanted to be, Brother Johnny. He wanted to be the possessor of the heavens and the earth. His jealousy got him kicked out of heaven. And in Luke 10 and 18, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. With a single finger of God, he was flicked out of heaven. And he was cast down, as the Scripture says, to hell to the sides of the pit because of his rebellion. You say, what, what does that have to do with me today? What does, that have to do, what does that have to do with us? Well, with Lucifer being kicked out of heaven, there left a vacancy in heaven. There was no one else that was going to reflect the glory of God. Who was going to fill that void? Who was going to replace Lucifer as a worship leader and the reflector of God's glory? Who was going to occupy that position? Was God going to create another angel to take that place? Was God going to create another, another creature, another being to take that place? Well, I've come to tell you this morning that that creature is you and I. That creature is you and I. We are to reflect the glory of God. We are to reflect the glory of God. The very presence of God is supposed to be reflected in us, Brother Justin. Genesis 1.27 said, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him. Male and female created He them. God said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to create a human. I'm going to create somebody else that was going to be the reflector of my glory. That's supposed to display my glory. That, that is why Satan fights us so hard. Listen to me. That's why the devil fights us so hard in living for God. Because he knows that if he can get us down, he knows if he can get us discouraged, he knows if he can get us depressed. And these things are real, folks. We fight with depression, we fight with discouragement. 
Those are enemies of the devil, Brother Greg. Those are enemies that he uses against us because he knows that if he can get us down, that if he can get us to where we don't even want to come to church or if we don't even want to live for God, that the glory of God's not going to be reflected in this earth. The glory of God's not going to be revealed to those that are lost in this world that we live in. Because we're, re we're the reflectors of God's glory this morning. And he will do everything in his power. And I'm not giving him any credit because Jesus Christ is greater. Uh, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's what the Bible tells us in 1 John 4 and 4. He'll do everything that he can to you this morning. To bring you down. To bring you down. That's why he fights us so hard. God did not choose to create another angel to take Lucifer's place. Instead, he created a man and a woman. We were created to display the glory of God in our lives. And I want you to, I want you to listen to this. Brother G.L. said when he gets back, he's going to teach on holiness again. He's going to teach on holiness again. That is why holiness, which encompasses our outward appearance and our inner attitudes, is constantly under attack by the devil. That's why he attacks us. That's why, why, he, that's why he, he wants us to struggle with holiness. Brother G.L. told us that holiness begins in the mind. It's a mindset. It's something that we, that we have to place in our mind and that we have to, to live with. That's why he attacks us. Because he doesn't want us to be different than anybody else. How many of you ever been somewhere and somebody just come up and ask you, Are you Pentecostal? Or how many of you went up to other people and say, Are you Pentecostal? And I'm not just throwing out the name. It's the presence of God that lives within us. We're associated with that. Because it's the glory of God, Brother Larry, that they see. There's something different about us. There's something different about the people that we see. We seen, we seen a, uh, a family in Syston yesterday, and, and I looked at them, I said, well, they're Pentecostal. They, they live for God. I could tell by looking at them. But it's something that, that we see. It's, it's to be on display. Lucifer, Lucifer, who was the angel of light, is now the prince of darkness. Think about how far, how far he's fallen. The angel of light is now the prince of darkness. And it's his desire to destroy the image of God that is displayed in us and on us. That is why he doesn't want us here this morning living for God. That's why he will do anything that he can to keep us out of the presence of God. It would be, it would be such a sad statement as those that I read in the Bible for us to leave here and go away from the presence of God and never find our way back. And never find our way back. Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. He said, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's not about us. It's about Him. It's about Him. So they might see our good works and give glory to God in heaven. We are a source of spiritual illumination in the dark world we live in today. It's, it's such an it's a, a, a ugly world. I'll use that word this morning that we live in today. Sin is rampant on every hand. And it, it, it reminds me of what the book of Genesis says, that, that men's heart are on evil continually. Was it yesterday or the day before there was another sh workplace shooting in Kansas? Three or four were shot and killed and, and several more wounded. You know, what's causing people to do these things? It's the devil. I said it, it's It's the devil. He's fighting. He knows, his time. he knows his time is running out. The Lord's getting ready to come back. 
with sin running rampant, we are commanded to let our light so shine so the world's going to see our good works and glorify our Father which in heaven. The wonderful privilege of worshiping the Creator was taken from the Son of Morning, Lucifer, and given unto the sons of God, which we are today. It was given to us. It was presented to us. Philippians 2 and 15 says that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Let our light shine. Let our light shine. This life in this world is a spiritual battlefield. And only those who fight the good fight of faith will overcome. The Apostle Paul tells us, he told Timothy he said, to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Only by wearing the complete and full armor of the Spirit can we successfully wage a spiritual fight. Well, the GL's taught on the, the, the armor of God, and I've, I've taught on the armor of God and the, and the different things, but we've got to pray on this armor. That's the only way to get it on, Sister Eloise. Sister Kim, we've got to pray on the armor of God. The Bible says to resist the devil and what? He will flee from you. We've got to put up a fight. We've got to have our loins girt about with truth. We've got to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We've got to have our shield of faith. We've got to have our helmet of salvation. And we've got to have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We've got to have those things in our life. We've got to have those things in our life. I know it's early, but I've given you what I, what I have, and I believe that the Lord wanted me to share this word with you this morning. Sister Amanda, if the musicians would come, I've got another passage.